Good afternoon. Back again for my uh, weekly video and back with uh, Quincy. He wanted to uh, be in this week, so I uh, hope you don't mind. Um, we have said all along that July 15th, we were going to make have some decisions made about the um, reopening of, of our campus, even though it's never really been closed, but the, you know, what will the fall semester look like? And so um, some decisions have been made. Uh, the restart committees have been working hard and we will have a town hall on Thursday, I think it is, that's the 16th at 2.30. I encourage uh, those who are interested to uh, tune in on, on Thursday. I'm not sure exactly um, uh, how to do that, but I'm, but I'm sure you'll be able to find out from the uh, website. It's at 2.30. Uh, the thing that I will mention, though, is that we'll have two. Uh, the initial one will be geared more towards students. It'll obviously have an update from our public health committee, and they'll talk a, a bit about uh, what the situation is right now from a public health uh, and science uh, standpoint. A yeah, num number of decisions have been made about uh, policy changes to assure that uh, the campus can be as uh, safe as possible. Uh, the Public Health Committee will, will talk a bit about that. Um, the uh, Academic Committee, obviously, uh, is going to be center stage. Um, everybody's wondering how what proportion of the uh, instruction will be face-to-face -face and what proportion will be online and remote. The, uh, some decisions have been made in that regard, and, and the Public Health Committee with the uh, provost will be um, focusing on that. Will the libraries be open? Um, how uh, often they'll be open? What the hours will be? Which ones? You know, all those kinds of uh, things that relate to uh, academics. Uh, there'll be quite a bit of emphasis on student life, what student life will look like, um, what's going to happen with the student center. Is it going to be open? How's it going to be configured? Um, uh, what about the, the retail uh, areas? Uh, will student groups be able to gather? Uh, all of those um, kind of uh, questions will be uh, will be answered. Um, housing and, and retail will be covered. The, uh, the housing is open. Housing has uh, always remained open throughout the um, uh, pandemic. Uh, there will be some uh, some policy uh, changes to assure that uh, there's uh, safety is uh, is prioritized. Uh, dining. Um, policy changes, you know, all of that would be, would be available. Um, so, oh, in athletics, obviously, you know, people are going to want to know, um, is there going to be football? And uh, will the Mort uh, uh, Harris uh, uh, Fitness Center be open? Uh, so we'll cover all of that. And then the following week, uh, we'll cover some of the uh, other issues that faculty and employees would be uh, interested in. That, that we might not have an opportunity to cover on the, on the 16th. So um, hopefully you'll be able to tune in. I want to thank the, um, the committees, the different restart committees. Uh, they've done great work. I'm, I'm very pleased actually with where we are in terms of the uh, recommendations that we're moving, moving forward with. I think they've been very, very well thought out. Um, they are very deliberative. And I, I just feel very comfortable with, uh, with where we are. Um, the purpose of the uh, restart committees uh, were to try to get us to this point. So uh, some of them will be, uh, uh, I wouldn't say disbanded, but they probably won't be uh, meeting as frequently. And in fact, some of them uh, probably will no longer be meeting at all. Uh, others, for example, the uh, public health uh, committee will continue to um, uh, meet and will continue to uh, give us guidance uh, throughout the year. Um, so we'll see. Uh, the chairs of the different committees, uh, I'm writing a letter to them today asking them to consider uh, which, uh, if, what, which, whether they need to continue or not. And the reason is because I, I really want to start um, focusing a bit uh, more on the uh, Social Justice Action Committee. Uh, those, uh, the members for that committee uh, have been uh, finalized. Uh, I, I do want to mention that we did get a number of um, uh, 
expressions of interest uh, from people uh, in, on the, in the campus community that wanted to participate. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, obviously, uh, we, you know, the committee had to only be a certain size, so we couldn't accommodate everyone, although we did accommodate some. But uh, rest assured that even though the bulk of the work uh, hopefully will be done over the uh, next six months in terms of um, recommendations and, and maybe even uh, beginning the implementation of many of the recommendations, the, the work of um, uh, prioritizing and fostering a diverse and inclusive uh, community and of assuring uh, social justice is, uh, is paramount in our, our campus community. It's, uh, uh, ongoing and there will be uh, plenty of opportunities I'm sure to contribute to that and, and I do appreciate everyone's interest uh, in this. Uh, it's, it's very heartening. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, let me just uh, conclude with uh, uh, telling a little bit about the uh, book uh, Educated by Tara Westover. I mentioned that I had started that uh, last week. Uh, I, I thought it was a, a great book. Um, uh, great reading. Uh, uh, very well uh, written, um, maybe even inspirational. Uh, this uh, is, is a story of a, of a girl who uh, grew up in a small town, uh, Idaho, um, and uh, had parents that didn't believe in uh, public education and did not um, um, it, uh, allow her to be uh, educated. Um, she did have a little bit of homeschooling, but not much to uh, uh, really uh, write home about. Uh, instead, she was uh, uh, basically working in the junkyard uh, with her father. Her, her father uh, scrapped metal, and she worked uh, uh, in the junkyard. Uh, it, it, it really, um, um, in a very dangerous uh, situation, uh, rather than being in school. But she ended up having a, a brilliant academic career. Um, uh, was able to do well enough on the ACT to not only get into uh, Brigham Young University, but was able to get get there on a scholarship, uh, and then got a PhD uh, in Cambridge um, uh, University in England, uh, which is of course uh, you know one of the, the top universities in the country in in the world. I mean, and so uh, she really uh, did very very well. Uh, so in that sense, I think it it was uh, quite inspirational. Um, you know, th there was one aspect of it, though, that I, um, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it, I, yeah, I just, um, I didn't feel great about it, and, um, and it's that I kept thinking how uh, the parents uh, must have felt uh, when this book was published, um, because, you know, certainly, um, you know, I didn't agree with them at all, and um, uh, but I didn't, it didn't, they didn't come across to me as fundamentally uh, bad people, uh, uh, certainly uneducated, uh, unsophisticated, um, but not evil, not uh, fundamentally uh, bad people. Um, and I, I say this only because there have been times when I've thought about writing a book, um, but honestly one of the reasons why I haven't is because uh, you know, I don't want to embarrass uh, people who are still living, and um, um, it would be hard not to do that. And so, um, uh, that's what I was thinking about uh, as I, uh, I was finishing this book, was how some of the, uh, the siblings as well as the parents uh, uh, felt. Uh, all in all, though, I'm still glad that she wrote the book. I, I think it's a, a story that was uh, worth telling. And um, uh, as I said, it's well written and it was inspirational. I haven't started a, another book yet. I'll, uh, I just finished this one last night. So I'll see you again next week and I'll let you know what I'm reading at that point, okay? Keep safe, warrior safe. <laughs>